just click record here. We're going to get started. Blessings, man. Are you ready to jump into the Giver Marketing Blueprint together? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing screen so we're ready to rock and roll. At, at the time that we set for today, and for those who are listening to the recording at a future time, uh, feel free to make any comments and let us know your questions so that we can circle back with you. Corey uh, will probably circle back with you or myself, and we just we just are privileged to be able to walk along with you and and help you improve your marketing ultimately, right, Corey? I mean, this is yeah. our privilege. Absolutely. How are you doing, bud? As we jump in, anything, uh, any any good news to to share? Thank you for uh, popping in some amazing branding pieces within even the presentation here. As we continually improve, everybody, we're all always improving, right? Always, yep. Yeah. If you're if you're not growing, you're dying. That's what I like to say. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, good. With that challenge, yeah. <laughs> let's let's rock and roll, man. Let's do it. Okay. Giver Marketing Blueprint Master Class. We do meet for master classes currently every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. So you can do the math on that, but we, we welcome you. If you're seeing this, consider yourself invited. We just ask that you go ahead and register at the link that you're seeing around this presentation. I'm Timothy Morgan, the founder, CEO of Giver Marketing. Uh, Corey Michael, our branding efficiency specialist. He's really a, a dynamic coach that's rocking and rolling and really a, kind of a team coordinator starting to develop a, a network here, Corey, and just really excited about that of yep. marketing freelancers who who are knocking on our door asking to be a part of something special. And and we can talk about that another time. But boy, we're we're just excited about all the talent that is um, made available through the Giver Marketing Network. Mm -hmm. Our master classes every Tuesday include topics like the Blueprint, which is what we're covering today, LinkedIn appointments, um, efficiency tools and tips, uh, social media best practices. And then we also cover membership guidelines for those marketing freelancers that we just alluded to that are, are really locking arms and, and helping each other uh, when it comes to encouraging our clients in the right direction and getting those done for you services done and coaching. And so we're, we're glad to be able to kind of showcase that. Hey, Corey, I know you and I have had some conversations about, you know, there's a big, um, there's a big push out there to generate as many leads as possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I I just feel like we need to dive into this a little bit more today because there's a bit of confusion about what's the most important piece of your marketing. And I, I, I would, I would argue that I know we're starting with arguing, uh, but I, 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 I would, I would contend <laughs> that leads are actually pretty easy to come by. Um, what, what might be more difficult is those, those conversations that that are meaningful right i mean do you have any thoughts on that as we jump into the blueprint today uh yeah i think i think you're right i think that um in the end leads don't matter if uh you can't uh adequately confidently consistently show your potential clients and customers who you are and what you do and how you are going to help them because remember it's all about uh, you know, what's in it for me? That's what everybody wants to know. What's in it for me? And so when you have the opportunity to generate a conversation with somebody, however that comes in, whether it's an ad or, you know, one of your LinkedIn strategies or whatever it may be, conversation is the very first place to start because that's how, how you get lasting customers. That's how you get lasting clients. That's how you begin to develop relationships power partnerships, the power of conversation really is an undervalued one. And, and one of the things that we like to, to talk about, Tim, you and I have talked about even more recently and, and for all those watching this morning is that, that everything we're going through today helps you have the conversation with folks. Um, and then when you get the leads, you can have the confidence to be able to handle them 
right? And so, so that's that's kind of what I think you're alluding to there. Yeah, and I I would say also that these conversations are more long term mm -hmm. than maybe um, a lead coming into your inbox. You have to obviously work at developing these conversations, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So I, I just want to touch on that just for a minute and yeah. um, kind of jump in here. Hey, we are a coaching network. We're known for our coaching. We're the highest rated reviewed network of marketing coaches and specialists on the planet. So we just want to make it really clear that we're here today to serve you. We're here to, 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 to lift you up, to take you to another level, just like a, a uh, a professional athlete might have a coach that says, Hey, let's help you in this one area. We're here to help you with your, with your marketing. Okay. Um, our tribe is the most trusted network of marketing specialists. Like I just mentioned, uh, you can check out our reviews online. We love the kind words and those who go through our master classes, we do ask that you give some kind of feedback or kind words online that would, uh, that would show that you're a raving fan. And we just really appreciate that. Uh, Corey will, Put something in the chat box or I will later. It's givermarketing.com slash review if you'd like to say some nice words. And th these are some nice words that others have said. Uh, things like, hey, it's like, unlike anything I've ever come across before, love the education first approach. Uh, the Giver Marketing team has tripled our business with very little expense using social networking. We've, we've dug in quite deeply with some of these uh, valued clients over the years some have been with us for you know years and years and years and they just continue to walk this journey together because we have core principles and values that they align with they really enjoy the the fact that there's a generosity component uh, we love giving back we hold a, a portion of our finances to the side for uh, a matching grant we do some uh, tracking of results and just make sure that the results are where they need to be, efficiency, ad, good attitude, and transparency is all a part of who we are and how we function, which is a little different than your typical marketing agency, just to be really <laughs> direct. It's just a, a different experience. So who benefits from the live ma uh, online master class, Corey? I mean, let, let's talk about this for a second. Yeah, well, something that, that you know, this, this is a, a quote that, floats around all over the place out there, right? Are you hungry to grow? Are you coachable? Are you passionate? And that, that really is important because those, those three kind of intrinsic core values that you have, even if you wouldn't call those your business core values, they may be personal core values, just who you are. Um, th those lend themselves to learning new ideas, to collaborating efficiently and 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 have fun while doing it while collaborating, uh, it, it lends itself to being um, more communicative uh, through the process of whatever it is that you're doing, and and that that's the kind of the people we just really vibe with. <laughs> to, to be quite honest, you know, we 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 don't really just you know. I, I think I, I need to give a little bit of a disclaimer here, Tim, that today on on this training we're going to be real with everybody that. Some of the things are, are going to be a little bit more direct and because we we want you to know, uh, we want you to know truth. And there's a lot of fluff out there. There's a lot of people that claim that they're experts on marketing and all that. We don't claim that or we're going to talk about something a little bit here. We, we are doing our part to try to help as many people as possible using a proven framework. Um, and and so I, I felt like I needed to, to just say that part um, here because... Um, people that aren't hungry, coachable, and passionate, we're not really interested in working with uh, because that is a part of, of who we are, and that's the kind of people that we know um, benefit from this kind of training. This is the fuel, right? I mean, this is the, the, the actual drive that helps us succeed in many areas of, of our business and life, and especially as we're embarking on entrepreneurship of some kind and starting things and growing, growing entities. I, 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 I can't help but remember that Dave Ramsey says that he doesn't work with people unless they're hungry and humble. Mm -hmm. uh, I also heard somebody recently say, humility is a weapon. And I'm like, whoa, this is like, there's a pattern emerging here <laughs> in my mind about people that are really great to work with. So 
Hey, yeah. if you're frustrated with marketing that doesn't produce expected results, you're in the right place. Let's just get nitty gritty with it. This is not your typical webinar where we're trying to pitch a bunch of th things. We're just trying to give you value. Just trying to give you something that's going to alleviate some of that frustration and help you. Let's start with a, a quote from Bob Berg, Corey. I mean, uh, this book, Go Giver, was a big influence on us and and even the name of our, our, of our company. Um, all things being equal, we do business with people we know, like, and trust, right? And I would say it's also important to note that we pay more to people we respect. And so there's kind of a, a second level of that. So we'll, we want to at least start with people knowing who we are, liking us, trusting us to some degree, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's jump into the blueprint. Here's the story behind the blueprint. After coaching, collaborating with thousands over the last decade, a pattern emerged that really just came from sheer volume of consulting and helping others. It, it, it became a roadmap for not only our company, but for others who wanted to learn the signature process. And that's what we're going to go through today. Branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing. Corey, I, I'm just excited to hear some of your thoughts on even just the, the branding components, but Let's talk about the homework assignments for not only our team members, but our our clients who who are coming from all different industries that want to kind of dive in and learn a little bit more about how to ramp their their marketing up to another level. Can we talk a little bit about the the homework assignments here for a second? Yeah, well, and we're going to go through these um, a little bit more in depth um, as we go through the presentation today as well. But just if you want to take a little screenshot of this, folks, as we're watching this, um, we're going to go through each of these areas. There's going to be a little homework assignment because the goal is not for you to listen and go away and forget everything, right? We want to give you something that you can do, some step that you can take soon as we're done with this. Honestly, any of these could be done within um, just a few minutes from, upon completion of, of this uh, masterclass today to help you move forward in these different areas. Um, and they're, they're, they're purely for you you can share your results with us we do um, at the bottom of this um, each screen you see that we have a, a private group page just based on facebook that you can go to and join and, and you can post uh those homework assignments there um get feedback get a little bit of uh, input from uh from timothy and myself uh, but the goal really more than than for us it's for you and and it's so you can take steps uh to move forward so like i said we're going to talk a little bit more about um, what those actual uh the homework pieces are in just a little bit here as we go through it. And you might be asking, okay, why, why homework? Uh, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't si sign up for one of your, I didn't sign up for homework cor courses or anything yet. Like, <laughs> well, these, these are obviously optional to see how, how hungry coachable and passionate you are. <laughs> so, Hey, listen, write this down. Information plus application equals transformation. So, so we're not in, we're not just in the information. Say business. it again, Tim. Information plus application equals transformation. So at the end of the day, we're not really here just to give you information. We want to give you an experience so that you can make change that dramatically improves your marketing for for your cause or company doing good in the world. Immediately. Immediately, like right now. So we'll we'll talk about those homework assignments a little bit later. But there they are in one one shot hey let's define marketing as we jump in here is is marketing the same as sales corey is that is that sales and marketing are they the same exact thing are they related like what what let's let's talk about this first they are related but they are not the same a lot of people get that confused a lot of organizations to, to be quite frank there's a lot of businesses that mix sales and marketing into one department when really they have different functions different roles and it is the the sales is the actual conversation to make a transaction but the marketing is the conversation right we we're talking about conversations earlier marketing is the conversation that leads you to the transaction or as we as we say it on this screen here it's this it's the pre-sale strategy and communication so you look at this funnel here we made you know we everybody loves a good funnel right <laughs> branding is at the top 
bring and it goes down into visibility, promotion, nurturing. At the bottom of that funnel is where the sales funnel begins because then there's a whole different. Um, this is a, this is a great little um, uh, depiction of what it looks like. That marketing, if you if you're into football or or you know. You see here, marketing gets you into the red zone. Sales gets you to the end zone. I think this is a, a brilliant way of, of describing it that, that we found here. So, um, yeah, they're for sure related, but not the same. And, and it's important to keep that in mind. A uh, little pet peeve of mine, if you don't mind, Corey, can I vent for just a second? Do it. All right. So prospecting is technically marketing, mm. not not sales, even, even though. Explain that. Why well, do you say that? Well, as we reach out to prospective mm -hmm. clients, we're prospecting. Uh, think of like a uh, a gold prospector, right? Look, going out looking for something. That that is just the exploration phase of the journey. Mm -hmm. The actual culmination of what needs to happen happens after the initial phases of marketing or outreach or prospecting and so prospecting really is in that marketing bucket if you yep. want to think of it that way uh, we also like to think of it oh, sorry i'm a sports guy i was a college athlete so i i end up with all these analogies that start flooding in if if marketing gets you to the green then sales gets you helps you just pop pop the whole the, the ball in the hole there right when yep. it comes to playing golf or or those kind of games so listen Branding is your domain, Corey. I, I, I just really want to kind of honor you and your genius and, and, and ask you to help us dive into this first pillar, this first piece, yep. this first step of the signature process. Uh, how, do we, how do we even <clears throat> distinguish branding from, from marketing? How does, how does this work? Yeah. Well, a lot of people think that brand, your brand is your logo, which um, for a number of reasons, right? There's, there are companies out there that put your brand on anything, promotional products, things like that. Um, unfortunately, that gets confusing for a lot of people and they think I need to work on my brand and what they mean is I need to work on my logo. But brand, your brand is not just your logo. Marketing is as a whole is communication, right? It's communication conversation, but branding, your brand is the entire experience that people have with you and your company. It is how they feel when they experience you. It is how they think when they experience you. It is, it is how likely they are to refer you to somebody. It is you knowing and being confident in what your mission and your vision and your core values are. It is uh, the nurturing process is part of it. How do you communicate with people? What is your style? What is it? I, I like to say this, we don't know what it's like to be on the other side of us because we are us. So it's important to get an outside perspective on what it's like to interact with us so that our brand is reflective of what we are trying to do and who we are trying to reach. That really is how I would nuance branding within the, the marketing scope. Um, there, there's a, a particular kind of branding as you are uh, as you are developing yours, maybe maybe you've had it for a long time, maybe you've had your logo and you know your core values and your mission, you know all those kinds of things, or maybe you're a startup and you're trying to figure it all out, this is the place to start. It's called sensory branding. Uh, it is, is thinking about what leaves an impression in every single area of your marketing process uh, and, and all throughout your business. So, so what can you do that engages with our five senses, right? That's how we learn the best. That's how we remember things. Sight, uh, sound, smell, taste, and touch, right? So with the sight. So, okay, this is the logo part. This is, this is one fifth of the, of the, the pieces here, folks. Sight, having good looking images and texts and fonts and, and not for the love of God using Comic Sans or Papyrus in your font, just uh, or in your logo. <laughs> okay, just now you're them. nerding out. This is I good. know, I know. Most people will know what those two are though. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but, you know, using, using things that look good, have a, have a modern feel. And it's okay to redo your logo every once in a while because, again, that's not your brand. That is a piece of the puzzle that, that needs to make sense during the different times. So, so having something that looks good, a website look good, having your, your business cards look good, right? Sound. Okay. When you're having a call, like we're on today and you're doing business meetings, this is, this is the norm at the time of this recording. Zoom meetings are, are very normal. 
can people hear you? Can people, do, do you sound garbled because you have a crappy microphone or do you sound clear and concise, right? What, what is that like for the people on the other side of you? Smell, when we can have, you know, uh, events again, or if you can have in-person meetings again, personal hygiene is important. That sounds like a funny one to, kind of, to talk about uh, personal hygiene in, in regards to marketing, but it is true. I, uh, I, I have met with people before that could have stood for a, a shower in the morning before, before, before we met. But even beyond just the personal hygiene, if you think about events, um, uh, pumping, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just use a funny, kind of a funny example. There was a, a church that I worked with and they wanted to create this experiential thing at Christmas time. And so I suggested to them to pump a uh, uh, Christmas tree smell uh, into the air vents and it, it created, cause they only had fake trees. Um, and so it created this Christmas time smell and people remember it. And it was, it was, it was awesome. But, or maybe it's an event where you just have food, right? That's, that's part of it. Speaking of food and taste, uh, if you ever go to any kind of party uh, or event, wherever there is food, that is the first place, the food place or the bar uh, are the two places that people go to first which is a natural congregation area, you know, for people to, to go to, a great place to, to meet prospects. Uh, but having, uh, providing the taste aspect as well is, is really important. And then touch, appropriate handshakes, high fives, pats on the back, hugs, side hugs, <laughs> whatever it may be. Uh, not being afraid to be generous with your gestures. This is all part of your brand. And so if you think for a second, when I go to a place, what, or if I host something or whatever it may be, Am I creating a sensory experience? Because at the end of the day, you want to ask, am I memorable? That's what it is, is really about. It is being genuine and memorable. That's what the sensory brand process. And you can think about Disneyland. I love talking about Disneyland. It's a fun place, obviously. But even if you've only ever been once in your life and it was when you were five, you remember what it was like to be at Disneyland. Uh, because point. you remember Great all point. of those memory enhancers. And then with video, um, you know, as you're thinking through how to have this sensory experience, um, this is just kind of a little tidbit for y'all that that video is uh, is at least five times, um, but I've seen statistics all the way up to as much as 50 times more effective than pictures or auditory experiences alone. Meaning that as you as you begin to put the word out there, as you begin to explore and, and find your voice on social media, uh, using video is a powerful tool in way to connect with people because it's about the connection. People can see the live interaction happening, even if it's a, a pre-recorded thing. People can see the facial expressions, can hear the tone of voice, can 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 be a part and be drawn in even more. Um, by by 2021, it's expected that that 80 to 85 percent of content that's consumed online is going to be video based, and um, that's an incredible marketing opportunity in a number of different ways um, that we uh, that we need to make sure that we're taking advantage of. And then there's this thing called authority branding. So this is basically becoming and being an authentic industry expert while associating with other credible influencers. So what does this mean? It means that you know your stuff, you, you, you do your best to educate people, to help people, um, to become an authority in your field, in your industry, on social media, not by saying you are, but showing you are, by offering valuable content that shows that you are trying to help people. Wait with a minute, say that one more time, Corey. <clears throat> Not by what? <laughs> uh, being and becoming an, uh, an authority in, in your branding is not about saying you're an authority, but showing that you are. That's good. So, That's so good. A, way, um, a way that that actually comes across, and this is gonna be counterintuitive to some of you perhaps watching this today, but you don't have to have all the answers and all the information. There are people out there, maybe some of them are competitors, maybe some of them are power partners in your industry, whatever it may be, that can lend an equally valuable voice uh, to the conversation that you can leverage. You can post other people's articles, you can um, you know, reshare posts, giving proper credit, um, but if you feel that you have to be the only voice that promotes any kind of authority in your field, then my encouragement to you would be to take a deeper look at your overall sensory branding 
uh, who you are because there is, it sounds like there is a little bit of fear involved there that is making it uh, so that you feel like you can't post anybody else uh, for fear of, of them taking some of your clients. And so don't be afraid to leverage your friends and leverage your power partners and, and people that you trust to um, share, you know, share something and, and, and reshare it. That is how you become an authority when you are seen as, oh, this person doesn't have it all figured out. They're okay to, um, to bring in other voices as well. So we're big fans, and I know Corey is a, a someone who does this on a daily basis of limiting that, that fear component and the insecurity component and just walk in your genius, how, wherever, whatever place you're at, just walk in that strength, walk with others who've gone before you that have done, done, done maybe a little bit more or, 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 or had some more experience be, behind them. And, and walk in the kind of the authority that you have in your brand. Don't try to copy somebody else's, right? Just just be you, but be the best and laser focus you you can be, and, and that'll work out pretty good. All right, so branding yeah. homework. Corey, can you give us some, at least some, maybe a little instruction on this first homework assignment? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what we would love for you to do, a lot of people are uncomfortable with video. They hate being in front of a camera. <laughs> they, you know, are, are new to it all and they're trying to figure it out. Here, here's a good place to start. Um, it is to post a one minute intro video of your story. Just, you know, something, something about uh, who, who you are, what you do and how you got there. Just a really short, succinct little thing. Um, and post it to the group page for feedback. We would love the opportunity to one, get to know you, um, but two, uh, tell you, you know, like, oh man, if you said this thing in this way and posted it to your business page, it'd be a super powerful marketing tool. So people get a a view at who you are. I think, um, Tim, if you go to the next slide, I think it has the, oh, I, I must have taken out the, the, the slide of, on the, the story aspect. Um, but anyways, yeah, folks, I, I would encourage you to, uh, to do this and to practice being on video. You can just use your phone. The amazing thing is that you don't need to have, oh, there it is. You don't need to have this fancy camera set up with all the lights. Lighting is important, but you don't have to have this crazy setup. Uh, you can just have one little, you know, either maybe you stand next to a window or or get a, a little ring light, something, and just just film yourself and and just take. You can take multiple takes if you want, um, but but just post a one one minute little video um, telling your story and your background and your why and who you are uh, and post it to the page. We'd love the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. I'll put the uh, the link to the page where you can post your homework right now as people are taking screenshots of this story kind of cool. outline here. Homework, page, HTTP. <laughs> By the way, everybody, uh, if you're going in, into Zoom, you have to put the HTTPS with all your links so that uh, people can get to the right places. We've 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 learned that along the way. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this this link that I just popped in for everyone will get you to our private group page where you can post your homework assignments, get feedback from safe and kind people. <laughs> okay. So and we want to not safe and kind. We kick them out. <laughs> oh, so, immediately. No so there. we'll give you uh, good feedback. And you'll also get a chance to share your story. Who knows, you might end up with some great friendships and connections yeah. in the group as well. Okay, so we want to be magnets. We want to be branded. We want to have give people experiences of our awesomeness. And uh, look, there's a, there's a term that we want to um, re, uh, challenge you to maybe, maybe look at. It's called imposter syndrome. And we don't have time to go into it today. But if you, if you get a chance, look at the, the, the phrase imposter syndrome. And that'll help you take your confidence, your brand, your, your, your story to a whole nother level if you, if you get rid of insecurity, fear, and imposter syndrome to the best of your ability in Jesus' name. No, I'm just <laughs> you're going to get me preaching here. All right, so visibility. Uh, by the way, Corey, uh, Vicki is, is, is on the master class today. She has graced us with her presence. Woo! And so it, if we get a chance to, to maybe get her her thoughts on a couple of these things that that would be great but but go for it man what do you got 
Yeah. So, well, I, I want to give the opportunity to Vicki here because she is, we call her visibility Vicki, folks. She is uh, part of our team here and she's the one, she's really the driver behind um, what we're going to talk about here. Um, Vicki, can you chat for a second? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Vicki. Good morning. I just got back from a walk. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Totally organic and transparent. Love it. Love it. That's right. So tell us about the um, the visibility, uh, the importance of visibility, Vicki, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the scam. Oh, absolutely. The visit, well, super, I love visibility. Visibility, this, this is a foundational product. This is something that absolutely is, uh, groundwork has to happen. It's, it's similar to the yellow pages uh, from days gone by. And if you want to get found and have confidence with Google and your clients, this is a really easy tool to get that done, um, to create uh, consistency in your message. And whether or not you have your website yet or not, um, you just put your name, address, phone number out there. Google matches with Google, matches with 45 other top level directories, and you are, you are singing. Yeah, and, and what I love what um, Vicki has done is um, she has given us this, this tool um, that you can uh, go to givermarketing.com slash visibility. Timothy will put it into the, uh, into the chat for us um, so you can go and do this free directory scan and enter in your business name and details and see how it is currently being viewed uh, across the interwebs. So um, Vicki mentioned that it, it scans uh, uh, a dozens of directories. Um, and if you have inconsistencies in, you know, addresses or phone numbers, or anything like that, it'll actually show you what is inaccurate information so you know that you can go and fix it. Um, you know, you can either do it personally, and that's great, or, um, you know, this, we're not pitching anything, but it is something that we can fix for you. <laughs> uh, but this, more than anything, is just to be an educational tool to help you see how you're being listed online and where you're being listed online. So thank you, Vicki, for putting that together uh, for us. Um, the other thing I'll say about visibility is um, you want to be found whether people are actually looking for you or not. You want to be able to be seen across not just the directories, but social media platforms, right? That's a huge one. So, um, Tim, if you could go back a slide uh, to uh, the, the, the previous, uh, there we go. Uh, there are a number of different uh, places uh, that I call digital real estate that you can own, right? So your website is, is I would say, one of the most important uh, pieces to have because it, you own it. It is something you can do whatever you want with. You can collect leads, you, you can um, have forms, you can do all these things, whereas everything else, the Google My Business, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, yep, all these places, they're free, which is incredible, but you don't own the platform. You, can, you have to work within their scope a lot of them have flexibility for a lot of different things, but um, it's important to remember that um, one, you should be on it. Um, and if you ask, uh, I get the question all the time, Tim, is, hey, should I be on this platform? And my answer is always, well, are your potential clients there? If the answer is yes, then yes, you should be there. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you need to be actively working all of these platforms um, because we don't all have time to be able to do that. I, we, we always say start with two and dominate. Um, so, you know, start with the two that you're most comfortable with, but, but it is so incredibly important to be visible across these types of uh, directories and platforms and the tool that, um, that we mentioned that Vicki talked about um, and the importance of that is, uh, is key to your business's marketing potential. I love it. And, you know, obviously, Corey, there's so many different platforms and uh, different directories and different places to be found online. We can't list them all here, but right. some of these, if you want to take a screenshot, are almost almost every business we work with needs to be on these platforms mm -hmm. right here. Like yep. there, there are some exceptions, but but ninety nine percent of the businesses we've worked with thousands of organizations, causes, and companies across the world, mm -hmm. all over the and almost every one of them need to consider these platforms. So yep. thank you, Corey, for putting kind of this, this part, part of this list together. And thank you, Vicki, again, for helping us be, be found with these visibility tools and kind of assess where we are. 89% of people go online before making a buying decision. So that's almost nine out of 10. And if, 
if if we really are in business to to help people and we don't want to be the best kept secret in town, we we have to get visible, right? Yes. Absolutely. Good. So try for a zero error rate on this uh, tool that we've made available. Some companies will charge hundreds of dollars for this tool. We made it available to you in the live masterclass chat box uh, for those who are joining us live. So we want to bless you with that. Um, I'll just talk about Google reviews real quickly, Corey, so we can kind of rock and roll through some of this. But in relation to visibility, there are tools out there that just help you get more reviews. Like for example, we just put a link in our live chat box here that includes an, an easy way for you to give us some kind words uh, online. And we're literally using the tool right now that we're giving to you. So we, we not only recommend these tools, we use them <laughs> on a daily basis. If you want to get more reviews online, and become known as that authority, that expert, uh, you'll want to go to givermarketing.com slash gbox. It'll, it'll point you to a third party that is extremely powerful in making it easy for your clients, friends, family, and neighbors to give you some kind words online. Did I say that in a succinct enough manner, Corey? Did I do okay on that one? You bet. Absolutely. Uh, and people are trusting these online reviews more and more and more and more and more, and it's not going to change anytime soon. So uh, we have clients who have hundreds and hundreds of reviews, and we have clients who just started and they're getting dozens. The key is to try to get through the, you know, double digits, like just, just start getting somewhere mm -hmm. with those five-star reviews coming in. And this is one of the reasons we're the highest rated in the country. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the good old fashioned, um, like physical uh, location, signage, this kind of visibility, Corey, yeah. the, 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 the traditional, I mean, we've worked with a lot of churches, nonprofits, small brick and mortar businesses locally and, and some franchises that are national as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just talk about this for a second. Uh, is, it, is it better to have more information on a sign and just, just a bunch of information or is it better to keep it simple and, and, e and e easy to see? Well, signage was uh, was how people found us, uh, you know, our businesses before uh, social media, right? Maps mm -hmm. and, 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 and yellow pages and different things. But then when you actually go to places, having clear signage is key. Um, it is definitely, depending on, I would say, Tim, to answer your question specifically, it depends on what you're trying to do and, and what your goal is with those signage is. Um, if, if more information is going to be important, um, I think that the location of it. So uh, clear signage that's further out for people when they're looking for you, um, that is simpler, is better. But then when people actually walk up to uh, your business or, you know, to, to, or whatever it is that they're walking up to, to be able to find you. If you need to post some kind of disclaimer or, you know, at the time of this recording, there's a lot of uh, pandemic related things happening, right? And, and a lot of a lot of guidelines. And, and so that is signage that can be posted on your windows to let people know what's going on. So it, it does depend, but at, at a kind of a macro level, having clear, simple signage that e people can easily find you, that is, that is the key so that people um, don't just, blow right past you <laughs> and, and you want to actually be found. I love how you said that. So the initial sign is that they might want to see on your vehicle or out in front of your building or even, even on a billboard or whatever, it, it, it should probably be so clean and simple and short to the point that you can see it in a matter of a, like a half a second, right? I mean, you just exactly. understand what's going yep. on. Yep. If you're driving 60 miles an hour and you you happen to see something on the you know on the side of the road or something, you probably should know at least what it says, <laughs> right? Or what or what it is or something, right? Note on that too is that there are there is a whole science behind size of letters 
visibility compared to how how fast people are driving at the distance that they are driving away from so when you do make signs and and get billboards made and all that kind of stuff make sure that you work with somebody that knows what they're doing <laughs> uh to make sure that you're getting the optimal viewing so um so that visibility homework um for everybody is to do that scan that we put that link into the chat box for you um and just see just see where you're at debbie um actually just mentioned and this is she is a perfect example of of this debbie said that um she needs help with this because she has a hundred percent error rate um which is strange because she is all over social media she is a she is an influencer in a lot of ways well we'll and, get her dialed in we'll get oh, yeah. her dialed but in the, the 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 idea with you, with you, Debbie, is that, that the tool was made for people like you, <laughs> for sure, to see where, you know, because it can literally be like a number is wrong or something has the, you know, the country code at the beginning, you know, the plus one compared to not, it can, it's little nuances that affects everything, that affects your visibility across the board. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you a setup with that, don't, don't Vicky, you? Vicky, if you're still here, t correct me if I'm wrong, there's a, there's a bit of a kind of a penalty that's happening for companies who are not listed consistently across these platforms. Is, is that oh, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, your, your website will not get indexed. They will just stop looking at you because you're not credible. Yeah. And, 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 and that maybe not, uh, not in every case, but in many cases, these, these nuances that these details that where they're listed, you're listed differently on websites and social media platforms and Google, and it's all different. That's where you start getting uh, dinged pretty hard. So let's move on to promotion. Thank you, Vicki, for kind of your, your uh, insights and, and really uh, being a specialist in that area. I, we, we just really, uh, I can tell you this, Vicki has done wonders to the actual giver marketing uh, visibility and she's allowed for some of our team members to get more visibility and it's just just clients it's just really awesome to have somebody who is kind of a kind of a visibility nerd i love it, I love it. <laughs> all right so promotion Corey. i'm just going to rip through a couple of these things and, and for sake of time because i want to leave you know we, we we always love to have good questions and answers toward the end here so look it doesn't matter as much uh, whether you're on every form of promotion. I mean, it could be a billboard, it could be other things. The, the, the key is, is promotion matters, okay? So when we promote anything, let's, let's, let's just, let's get some acrostics going. Let's get the pen and paper out and let's have some fun with some acrostics. Everybody likes a good acrostic. Uh, let's, let's dive into it. So if you're promoting something, if, if you, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. You need to inform, give a call to action, and then engage. If you can do those three things, which happens to spell the word ice, <laughs> and it's a really cool way to structure your campaigns. You like how I did that, Corey? Cool way? Very good. Just, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So. Anyway, very bad joke of you. Oh, yeah, very punny <laughs> for an old guy. I, I get it. But listen, if you inform well, you've gone a third of the way. And this is, I think, where most campaigns stop short. Yep. Then if you give a good, clear call to action, and by the way, we're not talking about a pitch here, it's just a call to action, it's just the next step, then we're good to go on to what? Well, the holy grail of marketing is engagement right now. I mean, Corey, you're the social media, and Vicki, you're the social media gal. Like, like when it comes, we're all social media people at the end of the day, we, we have to engage uh, with forms that people are filling out, social media posts. Uh, we could get all into that for hours, in which we do in a, in a couple of weeks. But listen, informing is the monologue part. Call to action is just the next step. And engagement is where the real gold is. This is where your relationships are built. The trust is built. If you want to look more into that, we're, we're going to talk about a, kind of a nurturing system in a minute, which dovetails right into this. But listen, don't gamble. Measure your results. Start with a goal in mind and work backwards and, and track everything. Uh, Corey is, is famous for saying, hey, uh, marketing is a series of experiments. Research, test, change, repeat. 
We do it all the time. This presentation today was has been improved. I wrote down some notes right to, as we were doing it that are going to take us from good to great and just continually improving. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake here and there. You just got to learn from it and move on. Here's another acrostic. Let's, let's get crazy with it, okay? If you want to evaluate your promotional um, strategy, it's usually the components and the pieces are usually going to fall under one of these categories, if, if not multiple categories, okay? So if you write out the word report, you're going to notice that R could stand for referrals, E events, P for print, O for online, R for radio and podcast, T for television, okay? That makes it clean, simple, easy to remember to some degree. If you're looking at referrals, set aside 10% of your marketing budget, your resources for referrals. This is the lifeblood of any viable, long-term, sustainable business, period. Got to rock and roll with referrals, okay? If you don't have an actual referral reward system where you, you can track and see where these referrals are coming from, who's introducing you. Uh, we do something called referral ping pong within our company, oh, just super fun, okay? So events, when it comes to events, whether you're the keynote speaker or not, if you're just in the room, offer high value somehow. We know some people who stand at the front of, a, of the door of an event and, and welcome people as if they were asked to be a greeter. If you're that assertive, <laughs> then do it. Like, have some fun with it. All they can say is, hey, sir, uh, we'd like you to go sit down or something. Like, can you not be a greeter, please? Can you not welcome people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, can you not be <laughs> Can you not be a warm, welcoming face? Now, listen, you got to have a good attitude while you're doing all this stuff. But uh, at, at the end of the day, get involved. If you're going to an event, you're not there as a spectator for the most part. I mean, goodness gracious. I got a little hack for, for everybody on yeah. here. I, something I alluded to earlier with events. If you go to an event and you're looking to network and, and potentially get some clients out of it, go to where the bar or the or the snack table is. Because what does everybody do? That is the first place they go. And then what do they do? They grab their drink, they grab their food, and they stand there for a second and look around and observe. That's where the introvert people typically, typically go first. That's where people that want to just look at the whole room, go first. And so if you're there, you can strike up a conversation super easily. So just a little little hack. Love it. it. Love it, Corey. Uh, another little hack, just since we're, we have so much time today. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> real quick, if you're in a room of, you know, a handful of people or more, any amount of people, you can go on LinkedIn and find out who's in that room geographically and, and request a connection with them. You just have to dig a little deep and find out where that section of LinkedIn is, but you can literally get a digital like connection with people, but geographically just by opening up LinkedIn and go into the network section and just try to figure out where they are. Yep. Easy peasy to connect with people nowadays. Uh, hey, print is not dead. It just needs to be extremely targeted and simple like everything else we're doing. And you'll see dramatic results if you do it right. I mean, look at the cow appreciation day at Chick-fil-A and some of those kind of things. 25% increase in foot traffic? Are you kidding me? If you're a storefront, like to pay attention to places like Chick-fil-A and, and some of these other great brands that have gone outside the box and just had some fun with it. Online media posts, messages, email campaigns, digital ads, like any, anything online um, should be considered, but definitely want to bring a specialist in to help because the online world has become a sea of misinformation. Mm -hmm. so please be very careful with that. But when, you, when you're ready to, to do it, just put a few hundred dollars aside. Let's, let's test some of these uh, mediums and some of these online um, platforms to see what's the best fit for you. I mean, we're seeing some traction with Nextdoor right now. TikTok's coming up the pipeline. Um, who knows how long it'll stay around, but listen, these, these platforms have millions and millions and millions of users on them, and you can target your conversations to your audience. Uh, radio, podcasts, hey, before you get on the radio, bring Get, your, get yourself in a place where you're bringing high energy. And here, here's a clue. Try for interviews. The 30-second radio spots, we, we partner with national radio 
um, entities. So we're, we're not against the 30 second spot or the, or even the one minute spot, but you tell me, would you rather have a five, 10 minute interview or a 30 second spot on a radio station? How much is that worth? I mean, a five, five to 10 minute radio interview where you could tell your story. Goodness. That's worth thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on how many listeners they have. Okay. Yep. That's why going on podcasts and radio, it, the audio auditory uh, side of, of marketing is just booming right now. It's huge. It's not going away anytime soon. It's actually growing exponentially fast. I'm sure Corey has some statistics on podcasts and things we can talk about later, but television. Hey, just like radio, get, get your energy on, tell your story, include your call to action, and goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen, get the video file to share on other platforms. Beg, borrow, ask, rip, do whatever you need to do to get that video file when you go on television. If you get your one minute of fame or your 10 minute interview on some good morning show or whatever you're doing, get the video file. Get a high quality version of that file and put it everywhere and repurpose it and splice it up and do all that. Corey can help you with more of that if you want to do that. Okay. Promotional homework, post any, and I'm saying it very broadly, post any ad or promo piece that you or your client has produced, preferably from your company. But if you prefer to get some feedback on uh, a promotional piece that your client, um, if you're in the marketing space specifically, has 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 been it's been produced for your client, you can do that as well. There's no excuse. There's something a business card, a brochure, a, a screenshot of your website, uh, your website itself, <laughs> a social media platform, like uh, some kind of link. What it, this is homework literally takes 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rock and roll. Finish it out, have some fun with it. And remember, marketing is pre-sale strategy and communication. The reason we say this, obviously, Corey, is because people confuse this next step, especially this next step, we call it nurturing, with sales. And it's not the same as sales. It's, it's the last piece that gets you to the holy grail of the sales conversation. And here we go. Like Corey said earlier, marketing is more like more has to do with conversations and sales has to do with with the actual needed transaction that that should happen. But uh, they're like a right and a left arm. There's they're similar, but they're not the same. I played college baseball. If I throw a baseball with my left arm, it's a lot different than throwing it with my right arm. A lot different. They look similar. They kind of act similar, but they, they use they're, they're different. OK, engaging. Yeah, I told you another sports analogy coming up. Engaging prospects with continued intentional conversations is the goal. Corey, let's just, uh, we, we have ability to present this next week as well. So let's just go through this really quickly in preparation for our LinkedIn training next week, okay? 80% sure. of sales appointments occur after a minimum of five trust building interactions. It's more like seven to 11, but we're just going to challenge you to, to have five touch points with people that you feel might be a good fit for your product or service. An introduction is your first touch point, so don't discount that. But here's a warning. Don't sell anything. Tell your story and get that contact information. If you can't find them on LinkedIn or Facebook or you know, by Googling them or their website, then you're going to have to just straight up ask them for their information or a business card or something. Okay. But generally you can find most information online as long as you have like their first and last name. All right. Uh, or, and location brief email. Do not sell anything on email unless you have a list of over 1 million people. <laughs> okay. Great connecting, learn more, ask questions at the end of an email. Um, notice I didn't say don't market to people through email. I said, don't sell through email. Okay. It's very different. Social media, friend connection requests, make sure, make and share content, reply to messages, friends. We do a whole, Corey does a whole training on this in a couple of weeks. So uh, we'll have some fun with that. Uh, step number four could be giving something of value, a physical gift. Uh, Tony reads on the training today. Uh, Tony sent me a miniature version 
of my 350Z. It was like a replica of, of my vehicle with my custom license plate on it. <laughs> Tell me that's not the most amazing gift. I blew him up on social media. He ended up with clients and all the different things be, because of this, this kind of interaction, some ping pong, referral ping pong and all that. But listen, if you give something unique or valuable or memorable or interesting, you're, you're going to be top of mind for months. Uh, invite people somewhere like this masterclass. If you guys want a free pass, one pass, uh, per, you know, one, one free experience to this masterclass, just shoot a note to Corey. Shoot a note to me and we'll get you guys a, a pass for one of your friends or business owner associates, okay? Invite people to places like this. Whether it's in person or online, there's a lot more online options now. You just gotta be careful that you're not getting pitched all over the place. Mm -hmm. You want to spend your time wisely. Personal notes, we'll talk about that next week using LinkedIn. There's uh, ways to do that on other platforms like Facebook. Um, gosh, TikTok's coming up the, up, the, up the trail with the youngsters now and parents are starting to pin all sorts of platforms. You can use these personal notes and really kill it. Text messages, snail mail. We use something called banner season right now to send out cards to people. I've sent, I've sent cards with a, a, an actual imprint of a, of a, a gift code sitting inside of the card. Just fun little ways to send personal notes, things like that. The almighty phone call, two options for next steps. And by the way, there's, it, it's rare to see a, a true example of a sales call anymore. You, really, when you're on the phone with people, you're just getting to know them. You're in a marketing process. You're in a nurturing process. Maybe a follow-up call is a more appropriate term. But a sales call? What are you doing? Trying to sell over the phone? I, I mean, it depends on what you're selling, I guess. But most products and services are not effectively sold over the phone unless you're working for Yelp. And if that's the case, I don't know. I mean, there's a reason they call them the billion dollar bully. So I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some layers there, people. Look up billion dollar bully. It's interesting. All right, nurturing homework post, your nurturing touch points to the group page. Don't be bashful, don't be shy. Give us you know, four or five touch points that you prefer to have with everybody you meet, kind of your nurturing sequence, your get to know you touch points, your, 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 your marketing moments that build the trust with people that, that you would consider leads and then you turn them into these conversations. You see how this is all tying together? We're, we're helping you actually build an actual marketing system yep. within your company. Ladies and gentlemen, Here's your four homework assignments. It will take you less than 20 minutes to do this. If you wanna re-record your video like many people do and jump through that hurdle, it might take you 30 minutes, okay? But listen, we've had people record as many as nine takes on their video and actually publish it, like put it for approval to be published on a private page and I only approved one of them because I thought it was really, you know, it was the most appropriate one. But you can do, you can go live, you can do whatever you want on that group page. And then we'll, we'll approve the ones that we think would, would be best for feedback. So here's the challenge. In the next 24 hours, I want to see a video from everybody that's on our master class within our group page. Even if you've done it before, I want to see it. I'm gonna see the updated version. I'm gonna see your story, which includes the, your background, your aha moment, and then the rest of these homework assignments are a piece of cake. If you can get through that first one, you're, you're on your way. I mean, this is fun, right? I think the first one's the hardest one, so if you can get through that, all the rest are cinch. Right? Like, let's get that big, let's get that win right away and let's just go. And by the way, that, one minute video, Corey, as you know, you know, we've recorded videos for political figures, all sorts of people, right, together. Uh, it, that video could be one of your most powerful marketing pieces because it's so organic, authentic, and story-driven. Yeah. We're big fans of like Donald Miller and StoryBrand and Seth Godin talks a lot about the power of story and tribe and all this other stuff. Listen, 
Just tell your story. We want to hear it. We're begging you for your story. Bring it to us. We want to give you feedback, okay? And don't worry, uh, the feedback's going to be gentle and kind and encouraging, all right? So listen, we got to ask for the transaction at some point. So if, if you're reverse engineering anything, consider reverse engineering this. This is the closest thing we, we get to when it comes to sales. Find your good, better, best packages. Find your good, better, best products, services, packages, whatever it is. Find your good, better, best. Um, some people call them like silver, gold, platinum or whatever, right? Find your three levels, your three tiers and reverse engineer all your marketing for those packages, for those products. Look, even a realist, even, even a loan officer has a good, better, best based on length of loan, interest rates. When somebody's showing a home in real estate, they're usually showing different tiers of homes. Like think of it that way. Like there's different tiers that I'm giving experiences to my clients okay yeah. and again yeah. Corey, oh. go ahead i know you have a lot of thoughts on that so what do well, you got yeah i was just going to say it's nine o'clock um right now um this so we're it. right at the end of our time and i wanted to give people an opportunity to um do, get some questions in so why don't you finish up your last couple of thoughts there and then we can grab some grab some questions there's a couple of the chat box yep. that's it um make sure you have a good better best um, at least in your mind and start developing your language around it and move at the speed of trust, ask for the sale and uh, follow the roadmap and everything will be blissful. <laughs> it's hard work, ladies and gentlemen, but it's well worth it. We're seeing some benefits. It takes, takes a little bit of time on the front end, but the rewards are massive. So what about those questions? What do we got, ladies and gentlemen? Yep. So there's one from uh, Debbie that uh, actually she had two really great questions. I want to address the first one about um, visibility uh, relating to putting her home address and she works from home. Mm. Um, and there are different options for that. Um, so Vicki, I think you would be able to answer this better than I can if you are able to real quick. Um, otherwise I can. I'm fine with that. It's there. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, I can. So um, I'm going to chat with Debbie after this, but um, there are options. If you have a home business, we can hide your address. You can have a service area and um, several service areas. So not to worry, but it's absolutely necessary. So I look forward to talking to you and I'll give you a call, Debbie, and anybody else. Just let me know. Um, I'll put my um, calendar in the, in the chat box as well. Perfect. So that, you know, so you can hide your address, you can do service areas. The other thing I would say too, um, if it's worth it to you, uh, folks, and this is something that I do, um, that I just recently did. And Vicki, I got to talk to you about my personal list things, <laughs> um, since you helped me with that is I actually got a, uh, a virtual address that is a real address, uh, via the post office. Um, and, uh, that way I can get, I can get mail there. I can, I can check it all that, but then it's more of like, here's where I'm where my location is based, uh, but that way, uh, and then I just list, you know, the, by appointment only, so I don't have to worry about people trying to go and, and just show up there. That's something that I do, um, and that has been helpful for some people as well, if you want to have some kind of address listed still. Um, I've done the same thing, Corey, and, and it's worked so far. I mean, yeah. Google may eventually. It, yeah, they uh, may. They may eventually start penalizing us according to what I've, I've been talking yes. with Corey, but for now, just roll with it. it uh, we had an issue with, I don't know if I want to say it. Uh, let's just say we, ha we had an issue with uh, posting our personal home address. Right. And a lot of people, uh, freelancers, small businesses have that issue. We don't, we don't want just anybody randomly driving up to our front door or something, right? So these virtual options, both at the PO box now and at UPS, if you want to pay a little bit more, and have a different location is 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 totally fine yeah, for, I, I actually I you know. actually would not recommend that <laughs> not starting out i no. really wouldn't i just talked to a um i i spent like two hours with a product specialist and i absolutely would not start out that way um they they are cracking down they want to oh, make sure they? That, yeah they want to make sure that people can visit you where mm -hmm. the address you're using so um, I wouldn't start out that way because 
getting reinstated. That's a, it's quite quite the process. So oh, uh, but if you've been sailing, you know, okay. um, you know, it's kind of a wait and see type of a thing. We're kind of in that limbo period right now, where if you have it, like Corey and I do, then we're probably okay. But if you if you're just unless starting it, out, Vicky unless there's a big sweep or something, which happens, right. but you know, probably I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that could would probably happen. All right. So bottom line, talk to Vicky. She's going to get the up, up, up to speed, up to date pieces. We've been rolling with some pretty basic um, strategies from years ago that are just, just now starting to probably be noticed by Google even more. But hey, listen, you got to start somewhere. You got to get listed on Google. It's worth tens of thousands of dollars. Great question. I uh, really appreciate your up-to-date information, Vicky. Yeah, thanks, Vicky, for that. Thank you for that. Um, the, the other question that Debbie had um, was, what would be the aha moment? I think that's a great clarification question on the video. So the way I like to say what your aha moment is, is what was the moment where you realized, this is what I'm meant to do? <laughs> or this is what I was created for? Or this is how I can most impact people because of some experience? So for me part of my aha moment was when i realized so uh, you know i i do marketing graphic design all that was when i realized that i can combine my personal experiences with my uh, like per like personal like rejection and and you know some of the fear based related things marrying what i learned from those with what i have done for a number of years i was a pastor uh, for 10 years as well uh, marrying my heart for people uh, and, and mixing those two things together where I went, oh my gosh, I can help so many more people if I just tweak my focus a little bit. That's something that I would share as an aha moment. Just something that kind of sticks out to you in your mind with your story that, that relates to why you are doing what you are doing. In, in, in your current iteration of your business. And it, it changes, it, it flows, you know, there's always updates as you go, but um, that, that's a way to kind of think about it. Corey, um, let me share uh, my story in 60 seconds. Sure. Okay. So um, years ago, I was in the nonprofit space, had micro business, really, really enjoyed that, but found it was really difficult to find uh, a trusted marketing voice for the causes and companies I was involved with. So I began exploring options of basically developing a marketing strategy internally and realized I kind of had this aha moment that after consulting with others and connecting with others and walking a journey of learning these pieces, that there's this void in the market for a trusted voice in the small business world. So we ended up starting Giver Marketing and we're now the, you know, the rest is history. So that's, that's a really basic version of kind of the, my story mixed with the the giver marketing origin story and it, and it, it, there's a there's a transition moment that lends itself to some some kind of epic journey if you want to think yeah. about it that way yeah, yeah. and then let's uh, let's do this last question tim and we'll sure. this one from emery um he said I, I believe i am a connector not an expert is there a way to market this to small business owners well, I, 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 Emery and I have gotten to know each other uh, over a little while now. And I would say this, if you don't mind, I'm just going to be really transparent, really direct. Okay. Um, I think we all struggle with uh, some form of, of fear in our lives. And I think many of us, it creeps into our, our, our ministries, our businesses, our lives in general. And I would look into uh, imposter syndrome as a possible journey to learn, uh, get a little bit more deep on, on, on how to maybe look at that. But listen, we're all, we're all designed to be geniuses at something. The question is whether we have found that or not. And if your genius is actually the art of connecting people, then that's what you're an expert at. So you need to continue to leverage that. Uh, you could literally have a ministry or a business around connecting. 
and people will pay you. Like, talk to around town, town Deb. That's what she does. You guys need to connect. Debbie, connect with Emery and sh share with him how you're how you're developing kind of this brand and this nonprofit and this business and all this stuff around connecting. Super powerful. Yep. Yep. Did I was that confusing? Did I say that right? Oh, I thought that was great. That was, that was that's what I would say as well. I um when Debbie and I uh, met and uh, she was telling me about that's what she does. She's a connector. Mm -hmm. I was like, so you're basically a people broker. Is <laughs> yes. How, how, uh, how you could think about that. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. That is a genius. That is a literally a part of personality tests and all yeah. sorts of things, right? 34 strong, I think has a, or, or uh, what's it called? What's the 34 uh, personality test? Strengths finder. Strengths finder has these different terms around connecting and things yeah. like that. Might yeah. be worth looking at. Good. Well, cool. Any other questions around these topics, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to help you drop a note wherever you're seeing this video, drop a note below and we will circle back with you. We're here to help and we'll see you and experience this awesomeness together next Tuesday, same time, 8 a.m. Pacific time. We don't miss a Tuesday unless there's a major holiday or something, but we're here every Tuesday 8 a.m. Pacific time, same bat channel. If you need Next access, week is LinkedIn strategy. Yeah, ne uh, thank you, Corey. Next week is one of our most popular up and coming sessions around LinkedIn. There is a reason that we're going to book over a thousand appointments this year alone, leveraging LinkedIn with no ad spend, no crazy funnels, and no spam. So let's rock and roll next weekend. Let's get those appointments going for you guys, especially on the B2B side, okay? God bless, have a great week. Bye everybody. Bye.